Looking for the quickest way to get on SSDI benefits? Come here, let me talk to you for a second. I'm about to share with you the top 10 slam dunk medical allowances for SSA disability. You heard your boy. The top 10 slam dunk allowances. And I'm talking medical evidence, I'm talking about listings, I'm talking about everything you need to be able to get on benefits with these 10 impairments. If you're ready for this, let's get it started. Now, I know there are some people, including some disability attorneys, who will tell you that there is no such thing as a slam dunk in SSA disability. Well, I'm here to tell you that is not true. There is such a thing as a slam dunk allowance because that's the, t that's the language that we used in the DDS. We would look at certain cases that have certain impairments and based on what we saw, based on the allegation, we would say that this should be a slam dunk when we get everything that we need in the case. I wanna make sure that I explain this again. If the right conditions are in place for that case, if the right medical evidence is there and the right development takes place, then that case, based on those allegations, will be a slam dunk allowance. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, when everything's working the way that it should, that issue will be a slam dunk any day of the week and that will get you on SSDI benefits. Now, like I said, I use that term slam dunk because that's the language we use. And I wanna make sure that I clarify what I mean because there are some trolls out there, some disability trolls out in the internet someplace in the, in the atmosphere who uh, just think that because having the actual condition or the impairment or the diagnosis is enough, that is not enough to get you on. You can say that you have this impairment, your doctor might say you have this impairment, but that doesn't mean it's a slam dunk just because you have a diagnosis. We need evidence. Just like I said in my book, The 10 Disability Commandments, Evidence is king. So you have to have the evidence to back up your diagnosis. So don't even go there with me. Now let's get into the top 10 oh, look at him. slam dunk allowances. Number one on the list is end stage renal disease. And what I'm talking about is a person who is on chronic dialysis because of end-stage renal disease. If the kidneys are in need of chronic dialysis, either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, and we're not gonna talk about that right now because I don't wanna <laughs> creep somebody out. When you're on dialysis because of end-stage renal disease, that is a slam dunk allowance. When the records are there and it shows a diagnosis of end-stage renal disease or ESRD with chronic dialysis, you are a <laughs> slam dunk allowance, point blank, full stop, send, send the crowd home because the game's over. All you need is a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease, CKD, or end-stage renal disease or ESRD in your records. And then you also need in your records evidence that you are receiving dialysis. One way that is very handy in getting this information that will speed up your claim is to get a form called a CMS 2738. And this form is the end-stage renal disease medical evidence report. It's a very short form, one page. Just take that to your doctor have your doctor fill out the form, just check boxes and fill out blanks, sign it, get that in your case, and that case will be closed very quickly. And I mean very quickly. I will add this for good measure. It's always good to have more medical evidence to support it. It just makes your case more airtight and bulletproof. So you could turn in the 2738 form that's all well and good, but when you have medical evidence to back it up, that just makes your case even stronger. The second of the top 10 slam dunk allowances is Down syndrome. There are a lot of adults who have Down syndrome, and some may be on benefits and some may not be, and they apply later on in life. It happens. So Down syndrome is very straight and to the point when it comes to 
the actual evidence that you need. So in order to meet the A criteria for Down syndrome, all you need is a lab report that shows what is called trisomy 21. It's a chromosomal defect. And you just need for a lab report, it's usually genetics testing that shows trisomy 21. And the second thing you need for this part of the listing is a signed document or a signed um, medical record that shows a doctor saying that you actually have Downs. So if you have the genetic testing and you have the doctor statement saying that you have Downs, that's enough to satisfy the A criteria. For the B criteria, all you need is a doctor report saying that you have a chromosome 21 issue, trisomy 21, and the facial features of Down syndrome, because usually Down syndrome, there's some facial or physical features that, that are typical of a person who has this issue. That's all you need for the B criteria. For the C criteria, all you need is a doctor report stating that you have Down syndrome and the facial features. So those are the three ways in which you can be allowed for Down syndrome. I should mention on the C criteria that you still need evidence of function. Usually a psychological test or your work history or education that shows that there is some need for assistance in some way is enough to satisfy that, that C criteria. So you still need that piece with the C criteria, but the evidence of function is not necessary for A and B. All you need is the documentation. Number three is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Very uh, disabling, very um, debilitating disease that is chronic and progressive over time. So all you need to be in allowance with Louis Gehrig's disease is a diagnosis of ALS. So it's documented usually by some kind of a lab test, uh, like an electromyography or nerve conduction, something that shows that the progression of the muscles and, 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 and the neurological function is decreasing and it's not there. The key here is that it has to be documented in the records as ALS with the lab testing backing it up. Slam dunk allowance number four is a coma or vegetative state. So if a person is in a coma or in some kind of a vegetative state, they have to be in that state for at least one month. And when that happens, the, doc the records are going to show and document the course of time that they've been in the hospital in that state. So all you need for that is the records to show that this person has been in a coma for, for at least a month. And that will be enough to satisfy the listing, which is 1120. Slam dunk number five is an organ transplant. So most organ transplants will put you on disability automatically for one year. The only exception to that is a lung transplant. A lung transplant will put you on disability automatically for three years. All you need to, met, to make sure that you meet this listing is evidence that shows that you actually had the, the organ transplant. Now, what I mean by that is, we're not saying that you are on the list to get the organ transplant. We're not saying that the doctor has said that you need one. You have to have evidence that says that you have had the organ transplant. And if you have that evidence in your file that shows that you have had the lung transplant or the heart transplant or the kidney or the liver transplant, then you will be an automatic allowance. Slam dunk number six is a bone marrow or stem cell transplantation. Usually these are for blood disorders or certain cancers uh, such as multiple myeloma um, or, or leukemia. It, leukemia falls in the category of cancers. So when a person has a bone marrow or stem cell transplantation, then that will be an automatic allowance for at least one year. Depending upon the situation, it could be one or two years. A, a leukemia, um, it could be one or two years depending on the diagnosis. So, but in general, any cancer or bone or blood disorder that requires a bone marrow or stem cell transplantation is going to result in at least one year of disability benefits. Slam dunk number seven is certain types of cancers. So there are some cancers 
where when you have the actual diagnosis, that is enough to be an allowance. So liver cancer, automatic allowance. Gallbladder cancer, automatic allowance. But there are also some other cancers that are either inoperable or unresectable. That would be automatic allowance. So if it's inoperable, that means that uh, either the surgery cannot be done or the surgery won't bring any kind of benefit. If it's unresectable cancer, that means that the cancer cannot be removed. So if your cancer fits in those in any one of those areas, then it's going to be an automatic allowance. One example of that is skeletal cancer. So skeletal cancers, once it gets into the bone, it's, it's, it's pretty much not going to be able to be removed at all. So if it gets into the bone or spreads to the bone, more than likely it's going to be an allowance. So all you need to satisfy these listings is a pathology or a path report or an operative note showing that you had a biopsy or you had a needle aspiration. So you just need to have that in file to document the presence of that cancer. In a lot of cases, all you need is a hospital discharge summary because the discharge summary from the hospital will have all the procedures that were done while you were in the hospital. So if you've, if you've had a path report, it'll have those findings in there. If you had a biopsy or a needle aspiration, it'll have those findings on the report. So a lot of, in a lot of cases, that is all you need. You don't, not, you don't need to have the actual procedural report. You just need to have the discharge summary and that'll be everything you need. Slide duck number eight is blindness. Now I'm gonna stop right here and break and do this right now. There are a lot of people even online who have said it's not really fair to have a person not be disabled and get benefits because of blindness in one eye. Well, there are people who are, are missing an eye who are still able to work. Sammy Davis Jr. had one eye. He worked. The focus is not about the worst eye. It's about the better eye. That is what is going to be looked at from the DDS's perspective. What can you do with the better eye? How good is your vision with your better eye? Your worst eye is already worse, but what can you do or what is left in terms of your function with your better eye? And if your better eye is worse than 20 over 200 in vision or visual acuity, that is enough to be considered statutorily blind for SSA's purposes. And that is enough to be an allowance. All you need to meet a listing for blindness is an eye exam by an ophthalmologist showing some visual acuity. You know, the 20 over 15, 20 over 20, that whole reading. So a Snellen chart, the one with the letters, is one way to do that. But there are other ways to do that. It's counting fingers. Can you count fingers with your better eye? Or can you see hand motion with your better eye? Or is there no light perception in the better eye? If your better eye has issues of this magnitude, then you will be an allowance. Slam dunk number nine is speech loss. And speech loss can be for any reason whatsoever, as long as the speech cannot be heard, understood, or sustained. So it could be something neurological, it could be something that happened as a result of a, a, a trump trauma to the vocal cords. Whatever the case may be, if, it's, if the speech cannot be heard, understood, or sustained, then that will be enough to meet the listing. All you need to meet this listing is the medical evidence that shows that you are unable to produce speech of any kind. That is all you need. If the records show that, then you will be an allowance automatically. And number 10 is hearing loss. Now I'm gonna stop right here and say this. I've heard some things online, some, I don't know, I've, I've tried to do my research, but people have said, well, you know, I, I'm deaf and I cannot hear and social security will not allow me, they won't even take my claim. I've yet to see any proof that that is the case. I'm just trying to tell you. I've worked on deafness claims. I've worked on claims for people who were at the, at the California School for the Deaf and they were slam dunks because at the time 
the listings were very favorable to people who had deafness even from birth. If you're going to say that Social Security doesn't allow people who are deaf or they won't even let you in the building because you're deaf, I need you to bring me some proof. And this is why I say that. Listing 2.11 shows that when a person has had a cochlear implant to treat hearing loss, that person is on disability for one year. All you need is an operative report showing that the procedure was done. Or you can get a discharge summary from the hospital that shows that the surgery was done. Or you can have a doctor statement say, saying that you have the cochlear implant. And it's hard to miss a cochlear implant. It's already on the outside of the ear. So it's, it's hard to miss a cochlear implant when it has been done. So based on any one of those criteria, you will be an allowance automatically on disability SSDI benefits for one year. And that wraps it up for the top 10 slam dunk SSDI allowances. I will say this, that there are some other ways where you can be a slam dunk allowance, but I didn't think they would be necessary to cover because these are the ones that are just no brainers. So if you want to look at the listing of impairments for yourself to see whether your impairment meets the criteria for a slam dunk allowance, go ahead and look. I provided a link in the description so you can check out the listings for yourself. Now that's it for this video. Go on to the next video. Don't just just go ahead because there's other good stuff that I got. Don't leave me hanging because I'm going to see you on the other side.